Hey everybody, Claire here, and I am so excited. This is the very first of the Cool Mom series, and I have one of the coolest moms I know, Alana Saul. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with yeah, me today. I'm excited to be here. This is gonna be so yeah. fun. I would love to have you describe what it is exactly that you do. Yeah, so um, I have a small boutique digital and social media company, and we do you know social media and content for um, a couple different brands and then for um, laurenconrad.com is our big one. You know, we work with Lauren on all of the, creating all the content and all the social media postings and everything like that. And then, you know, along with everything, you know, behind the scenes running a website, you know, so all of the kind of, you know, less exciting, you know, business aspects mm -hmm. and, and technical aspects and all of that. It's funny, I feel like if you have a job in social media, explaining what you do to anybody who doesn't work in social media is almost impossible. It is, it's it's tricky. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes mm -hmm. that I think people don't understand, but kind of, you know, in a nutshell, we get to, um, you know, create fun content, you know, brainstorm fun ideas that we would want to read about have, you know, photo shoots and, and put together a fun blog post that hopefully everyone likes to read. So how did you get started in that? Did you come out of college knowing you wanted to work in digital media? Like what was sort of your calling? Yeah, I mean, when I came out of college, I don't think careers in digital media quite even existed. Mm -hmm. I thought I was gonna um, work in magazines. I kind of, all my internships were in magazines and then I kind of ended up just falling into this afterwards, you know, as kind of digital media was on the rise and the magazine industry was, mm -hmm you know, not doing as well um, and ended up like totally falling in love with it because, you know, I love that kind of real time aspect of getting to see people's reactions and see mm -hmm. actually, you know, literally immediately after you post something, what's doing well and what kind of feedback you're getting. And I fell in love with like that aspect as well, even though kind of at the heart of it, you know, the content creation is the same. One thing I noticed with working with long lead magazines, like national magazines, you'll see on the newsstand at like the grocery store is if you want to do something for Christmas, you have to talk to them in August. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, it's to funny. us, yeah. so it's like sounds insane. Yeah, yeah. But in digital, it's like two weeks out. Yeah, like, as long yeah. As we usually work, weeks. like we start planning like a month out, but mm. it's also just nice because like with a magazine, you don't necessarily like even if like an issue does well, you, you don't you can't always pinpoint why or mm -hmm. what people liked about it. Whereas like with digital, you're like, this exact post like did really well and everyone commented on it and told me why and like this one didn't perform as well and what can we kinda do to create more of that content that everyone loved. So when did you become a mom? Um, two, almost two and a half years ago. Oh yes. My gosh. Yeah. And I, can I say that you're working on baby yes, number two? Yes. Yes. Number two <laughs> on the way, coming in June. Yeah. Yeah. So you already were um, in your career when you became a mom. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A few years in, we kind of knew that. Um, you know, we didn't want to wait too long. It was something we knew we wanted to do. That's great. So we went for it. Yeah. Was it disruptive to your career? I think it's hard to like ever say like, oh, this is not going to be disruptive at all because when you have a new baby and become a new mom, mm -hmm. as you will see soon, <laughs> everything gets a little bit crazy at first but you kind of find your new rhythm mm -hmm. um, and I think in a lot of ways it's like even been you know like a positive aspect of my career I mean I think I've learned how to manage my time better I've learned how to be more productive and I feel like to the industry you work in probably one benefit is that like your office is I think all women right yes yeah, yeah. I work like even with the other you know companies that we work closely mm -hmm. with and everything it's like 99% women, wow. um, so it's definitely a really supportive environment. I feel like one thing that I've seen um, in certain industries and even like in other countries is um, there's a lot of flexibility to time, which is as long as the work gets done, how you manage that time is kind of up to you. Yeah, I mean that's the other amazing thing about working in digital media too, is so much of what we do is online, obviously you know there are a lot of like in-person meetings and you know face-to-face -face and, and photo shoots and that type of thing, but um, you know, at least 50% of the work we do is stuff that we're just doing in front of our computers. So having that flexibility and knowing that like, you know, if I have to stay home with my sick toddler one day, yeah. I can work after her bedtime and finish up or, you know, log in extra hours on the weekend and it all kind of evens out. How long was your mat leave? Like how much time did you I take I took off? three months off, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, three months ended up being a good amount of time for me because mm -hmm. I think I definitely needed those three months mm -hmm. to kind of, you know, transition and becoming a mother, deal with, you know, sleep deprivation, mm -hmm. learn how to breastfeed, that kind of yeah. thing. Um, but I was also like very ready to, you know, get back into work, you know, having a job and a career that I, that I love. So how do you balance it now? Um, they're kind of, I mean, it's always just a constant juggle, but there, I mean, I think the number one way that I'm able to balance it is mm -hmm. just having that kind of flexibility. And, you know, I typically am working just from home on my mm -hmm. computer a couple days a week. So that makes it easier to not have to deal with a commute or yeah. 
getting ready, you know, doing my hair and makeup, <laughs> getting dressed in real clothes, even if I don't want to, you know, also just having, you know, other support. I mean, I have a, like an incredibly supportive partner, so I'm very lucky in that mm -hmm. aspect. My husband's incredibly, you know, involved in everything is 50-50, so. But also just having, you know, whether it's a supportive, you know, family or if you, you know, have like a childcare provider that you really trust and love. So I think it just knowing that you're not going to be able to do it all yourself yeah. and making sure that you have those other people in your life you can kind of count on. So as a soon to be working mom, do you have any advice for me for like that first because I'm sure it will be a shock yeah. Like when I go from being just like a lazy pregnant lady to all of a sudden having this yeah. wailing child. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just ask for help. Like anyone who offers, whether it's your friends, your family is like... <laughs> kind strangers on the street. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Whoever. You know, I mean, it really, it really does help. So just, you know, like have people bring you food, have people help <laughs> out in any way they can. Like, you know, even if there are certain things you're used to like doing for yourself, if you can like budget to pay for them for a little while like you know yeah. you know have someone clean your house an extra day you know totally like that kind of thing just knowing that um you know you should just ask for all the help and take it and be happy and, <laughs> and grateful i've been joking with my husband that i'm like you know that the last trimester is gonna feel like we're apocalypse preppers <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like what are you talking about it's like well like we're going to clean out all the freezers yeah. and we're filling it with like soup yeah and like lasagna yes yeah. and also like I think for like the first three months mm -hmm. of parenthood, I did not like go to a store once. Like mm -hmm. I just like used Instacart and oh my God, Amazon Instacart. Prime like all the time, <laughs> which like normally I'm like, no, like I don't mind doing my grocery shopping. You know, I want to like, but just, just use Instacart, just use the Amazon Prime, I mean, just go for it. Yeah, you know, and like probably, don't feel guilty about it. You yeah. probably invest in like extra dry shampoo. Yes. Because <laughs> yes. I feel and like even having the time to like take a shower feels yeah. like the height of luxury yeah. Yeah. right yeah. then. What advice would you give to someone wanting to enter into, you know, sort of a career in social media? I mean, I think hands-on experience is like always number one. There's a lot you learn as you go mm -hmm. with social media, especially because everything's changing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even if you think you're kind of active on your own personal accounts, you may not be aware when, you know, an algorithm shifts on Facebook or when you know Google Analytics offers new information so I think just you know starting kind of with with a company where you can learn those kind of insider tips and tricks and where you're really staying ahead of the trends because mm -hmm. um, everything's constantly changing on social media but that's what makes it exciting too is you know it keeps you on your toes that's true mm -hmm. what is the best advice about motherhood you've gotten and what is the worst advice about motherhood you've gotten oh. I've gotten some really yeah. weird advice and I'm like this can't possibly be good advice yeah. <laughs> what the worst advice I've, I've actually like surprisingly gotten a lot of good advice from people mm -hmm. that I trust too I mean I've heard like really weird outlandish things but I kind of just ignore them. <laughs> you just kind of filter it forget out them. Yeah. you do you have to filter it out I've gotten a couple of really good tips mm -hmm. I mean the best thing that I kind of tell people that I think I had a couple of friends tell me who were just very honest was like don't be surprised if everything kind of feels like a war zone at first you know it takes a while I think I thought that I would be in this like such state of bliss that like, you know, falling in love with my new baby that mm -hmm. I like wouldn't mind the sleep de deprivation or oh, the like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, leaky boobs or anything else, but you definitely mind it and you're definitely like losing your mind for a few weeks and that doesn't mean that like things aren't gonna be amazing yeah. a few weeks later. So, you know, just knowing that that's normal if things are hard at first. Well, and not mm -hmm. to punish yourself if, yeah. you know, if you're not feeling like, you know, Beyonce immediately. Exactly. It's like yes. the earth mother goddess. Yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. just be gentle on yourself and go easy on yourself. The other advice that I kind of, you know, heard a couple times that I give people now too is to try and kind of let the baby fit into your life and your mm -hmm. own identity, especially when you're a working parent, you know, as opposed to changing your entire life completely because you now have a baby. Totally. But yeah. I feel like too that has to be good for the kid. Yeah. Because like my mom was a stay at home mom, but it's really interesting like she treated it like a job but she had such a strong she has such a strong personality and such strong taste and she was always really busy with other things yeah. like with friends or yeah. volunteer work or what have you um you know i never felt like i knew she loved me but i never felt like i was the center of the universe if that makes sense yeah but i think that's yeah. like important exactly. and a good thing because then you were exposed to all of these other interests that your mother exactly. had and that yeah. you know you might if all she ever did was like take you to chuck e cheese then you wouldn't have be as well-rounded as yeah, cultured as you are. And yeah. I think it helps kids yeah. to um, cultivate their own independence. Yeah, it definitely really, does. Because, you know, yeah. I feel like, at least for, for me, that's the hope for my child is like that they'll be autonomous and able to kind of think for themselves and live for themselves and kind of hopefully cultivate that. And then, of course, when they turn 18, I'll be like, never leave. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Turns into misery yeah. really quick. But in the meantime, yeah. it doesn't mean you have to start stop traveling. It doesn't mean you have mm -hmm. to, like, stop, you know, um, doing so many of the things you do mm -hmm. like take your kid to non-kid restaurants like mm -hmm. that was a big thing for us is like we love you know like we like to cook and we also like to go out to eat and like 
we never really did like kid food with Eden and now I have like a two and a half year old whose favorite foods are like sashimi and like capers so like wow you know um I think that was like a big thing is like we just you know like kind of fit her into our mm -hmm. life in that way and I think you know everyone's happier for it well thank you so much for sharing yeah. about your story career and then yeah. motherhood too yeah. make sure to check out we are polka dot media .com, and then also go to laurenconrad.com and see all the awesome like really fun content yeah. that you guys put together and we've been doing a ton of um you know motherhood and mm -hmm. parenting content in the last couple of years oh, really too, fun. So. thanks guys for watching like the video if you like it and uh we'll see you next time yeah